Hello, hello and welcome back to Leaky Gaming and welcome to our five things that you need to consider when starting a new game in Surviving Mars. Just to clarify, I have all DLCs installed, but this is relevant to any DLC that you have, even if you're playing just a base game, this is going to be relevant to you. So the most important thing that you're going to need to consider when starting the new game is going to be the cargo. One small side note is if you go for a commander profile of Hydro Engineer that gives you start with water deposit with revealed, domes consume 25% less water and bonus tech water reclamation, this changes things a little bit because you already have water. Water being one of the most, if not the most important thing on Mars, you will have to find the water ASAP. Water is going to be used for fuel production, that's going to be the Alpha and Omega for everything, but later on oxygen and uh, other stuff that you're going to be producing. So there are two ways how to get water on Mars. One of them is with moisture vaporators that you can bring from Earth and research later on in the game. The second one is finding source of water on Mars. So let's talk about the first one. The first one would be uh, getting moisture vaporators from Earth. Now they're quite expensive, 200 million with this setup that we're running here. Uh, two probably would be necessary in this case because you would want to have two refineries running. And then the downside of them is that that wouldn't be enough for sustaining people on Mars. You would still have to either find the source of water or you would have to get more moisture, moisture vaporators from Earth, which is quite expensive. And the second option would be to get orbital probes. I usually, this is something that I usually do. I go for eight orbital probes, eight drones, and uh, the vanilla, whatever vanilla decided to go, 10, 15, 10 with electronics, machine parts, and polymers. The third most important thing when packing your payload is the vehicle. Usually vanilla tells you to get with a transport, sometimes commander, sometimes even safari, but always, always, always pack the explorer. Explorer is the most important one. It's going to give you the research boost when you research something on Mars. And plus there's a technology that we're going to talk about. So what you see on the screen here, this is uh, my preferable way of going to Mars. A little bit of a Hail Mary here with the orbital probes to find water with the explorer. 8 drones, 10 polymers, 15 machine parts, 10 electronics and 2 prefab fuel refineries. I hope for the best and uh, to find the water and start producing fuel. The second way would be without these orbital probes, you can go all the way to zero, they are not important. If you're gonna bring your own water, it's not really important. And you would have to pack two vo moisture vaporators. You, did a, you need additional uh, you need additional space, so we would go for less machine parts. You will have to get those machine parts on the second rocket, but uh, you will be able to get two moisture vaporators and two fuel refineries. The only thing you need to produce electricity to produce fuel, and that's it. The second thing you need to consider when landing on Mars is the location where you're going to land. You already have a couple of preset locations with really beautiful geography, but what I usually like to do is randomize it. Now, you're not going to be uh, randomly landing on some place that is frozen, doesn't have any solar power, or it's frozen most of the time, or it has too many uh, dust storms. You would probably choose where we would like to land, and my suggestion is uh, if you need to choose the threats, let it be meteorites or meteors. Meteors are gifts from the sky. Rest of the stuff here can actually are, has only downsides, but meteors can actually give you something. That would be polymers and metals. Regarding the resources, eh, it can be either or, more the merrier, but um, it's not so important. As long as it's more than half, I think you should be fine. So let's find some random position that has uh, a lot of stuff that we need. Concrete, again, it's not so important, so I don't prefer these kind of locations. Again, dust storms and cold waves, both of them being so high, this is not really a hospitable place to land. Water, having a lot of it, this is nice. Uh, we have some dust devils and some storms, nothing too drastic. Everything more than two would be a little bit problematic. But let's find a nice place and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we found here a lot of meteorites fall in this area. Uh, it has decent amount of metals and a lot of concrete and water. So let's go and start landing on this location here. 
So the most important thing when you get into the landing screen is to pause the game. The game is paused because we have this Who Are We, the Church of the New Ark and Commander Profile, we are ecologists, we're gonna go and pause. Straight away pause. This is really important because you will do some discoveries sooner rather than later and better have those discoveries directed into the research that you want. So this brings us to a third most important thing and that will be research. There are two technologies that you really, really should get as soon as possible. Unfortunately, none of them are shown here. One of them is in robotics and one of them is social. I'm going to show you right now how they look like and why you should get them. But first, even if you don't have them shown here, select both of those to go and find those two technologies. So technologies in question are under robotics, that would be the Explorer AI, and under social, that would be the Earth Mars initiative. So the Explorer AI is one of the reasons why, one of the big reasons why you should have uh, Explorer on Mars ASAP, because when you have Explorer on Mars and you have this technology researched, you get 10 research, uh, sorry, 100 additional research. The second technology is Earth Mild Initiative. It does the same thing and increases the sponsor's research by 100. Now, this is relevant even if you're playing with a high research country like European Union or smaller nation like the Church of the New Ark that has zero research. It's really, really important. My suggestion is to go straight away after these technologies. So we are still paused. We're gonna have to choose a research. We're gonna have to start researching or scanning the areas around our, around the, the landing site, which is gonna be where this concrete deposit is. So I'm gonna go and choose a couple of closest free open spaces to scan. You can scan the mountains as well, but the, since it's only 10% buildable area, this is where they're gonna find resources or not. This is where we're gonna find anomalies or not. But I suggest you go for the big flat areas. Now you have some suggestions that uh, something can be found in this area. Preliminary scanning found concrete and metals here. You can see it here on the bottom of the window. And then you have concrete and metals over here. We have some research, some anomalies, polymers, metals and concrete. And you can see here that we have some as well. Okay, let's land the rocket. So we chose to land around here. I'm going to play paused. I'm going to show you this is the concrete deposit we have. It's high. This is quite interesting. It's really good uh, that we have that 1,500 concrete here. It's also a decent amount. Regarding metals, we have some metals around here, 49 and 22. And then we have another 30 here. So that would be just over 100 metals. This is going to be a decent amount to start our colony. So first things before we even land, let's start planning our industries. So we're going to go for the extractor here, concrete extractor. I'm going to place it in this direction. I leave usually this concrete icon uh, away from the building so I can see how much concrete is left. The second thing you're going to need uh, the power cable. I suggest using the only five limit, five hexes uh, power cable because it uses one metal if we place it here. And also this gives you where the end of the dusty area is. After that, you need to connect it to a solar panel. This is the only power that you have, that we have. You could have brought from Earth stirring generators, sterling generators, but we didn't. And uh, for large wind turbines, you need the actual concrete. So getting this industry up and running as soon as possible is paramount importance. So we just constructed our power plant, solar power plant. We still didn't one more suggestion, don't place your resource pads until you're done building. Let them stay in the rocket because your drones are going to be really busy. They're not going to be constructing what you want. The next thing you would want to do is either build a battery so you can store some electricity from production, day of production, and then it can be used at night. Now, the problem with batteries is that the maintenance of the power accumulator or battery is in polymers. So you're going to start using your polymers to, polymers to maintain the power accumulator. The second way is to have your wind turbine, construct a wind turbine, which you're going to have to mine the concrete first to construct it. And then you're going to have 24 hour power production, constant power production. Usually I go for wind turbines, but uh, in this case, we're going to go for batteries uh, just to show you how it works. When constructing a battery, go for a second solar power plant. One thing to consider when placing the moisture vaporers is they require space. They have the catchment area of the air around it. And uh, if you overlap them, they're going to have less productivity. So we're going to go and place a couple of 
moisture vaporizers around here so we can start harvesting the moisture. I will connect the second one with electricity as well. And we're gonna connect them with pipe system. Right, after that is done, bear in mind that they're gonna consume electricity as well. Uh, we're gonna place a couple of refineries. Refinery prefabs that we packed from Earth can be found in the industrial section. And what I like to do is, just in case, put a uh, water storage. If we have, by any chance, uh, some of the buildings not working, uh, moisture vaporers can store water in the meantime. Another tip is when you're producing fuel or concrete, bear in mind that your buildings don't have to work at night. So you can literally choose that night shift is off. So this concrete extractor will not work at night. That means it's gonna put less strain on your power system or your battery during the night. Battery has discharge or maximum output of 20 power. So bear in mind that this battery cannot run all the refineries and moisture vaporizers day and night. You will have to shut something off. And after all the industries are finished, you can now place the final universal depot where your drones are gonna empty everything. They're gonna start collecting the concrete that we accumulated. They're gonna unload the rocket and the rocket will be ready to accept fuel to go back to Earth. And the fifth thing you need to consider is the scanner. Scanner is really important because it's gonna speed up scanning of the terrain around you. So build it as soon as you can in this list is the fifth most important thing that you're going to need. This is going to reveal some anomalies, it's going to reveal more resources, and you're going to be able to spread faster, get technological advances, and get new technologies. Just for demonstration, it took us just over two souls or two days to scan the area over here. And let's see how fast we're gonna scan this one. We have sensor tower boost of 319%. It's currently scanning at 15%. We're gonna unpause this and follow how fast it actually goes. We're gonna use the fastest speed. As you can see, it's flying through the scanning. So just to recap, the five most important thing you should consider when starting surviving Mars, uh, even with vanilla game or all DLCs is cargo, especially if pay, pay attention to water. Do you want to produce your own water or do you want to find a source of water on Mars? The second thing is landing, choosing the landing site that has enough um, uh, resources that you want and has the least amount of danger. If you have to choose any danger, let it be meteorites because they are gifts from the sky. They can bring you metals and polymers. They can damage your equipment, but more often than not, they're bringing you stuff. The third thing to consider is the research. Before you start getting into the game, go and choose your research and choose those two important technologies that we mentioned, and uh, they will give you additional research points. The fourth one will be power, water, metal, and fuel. So get your metal when it's outside of range of your rocket. You can send your drones to get it. Water, try to stockpile it as well if you can, if you have additional source of water. You don't have to have buildings running at night like refineries or the concrete extractors. You can shut them off at night if you're using solar power. If you're using wind power, you can then run them 24 hours a day. And uh, the fifth and most important thing is scanning. Get scanning as soon as possible because this is going to give you additional research, additional materials, sources. It's going to find you everything that you need. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any suggestions to improve on this video, I can make a new one. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, press the like button. If you didn't, leave a nasty comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the video. Uh, like, subscribe, notification bell, ring it, comment section, hit it. And if you want to support the channel, you have the description of the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.